are American and European right-wing extremists financing Muslim terrorist attackers for political gain? It's a fair question in the wake of the London terror attacks, for which I extend my sympathies and condolences for those impacted both in London and around the world. But the simple fact of the matter is the attack that occurred on Saturday happened just days before the June 8th British election, the one pitting the conservative current Prime Minister Theresa May against the challenger, Jeremy, Jeremy Corbyn, representing the Labour Party, the Liberals. And not only that, this is the second such attack in two weeks, the one, of course, being the Manchester attack. Now, after the Manchester attack, campaigning by both parties, by both individuals, May and Corbyn, was suspended for a few days. It has since resumed. But now, in the wake of the London terror attack, there is a call for the election itself to be suspended and for the vote not to happen. That would leave the conservative, Prime Minister May, in power. What we have had in the wake of the London terror attacks is the common process that we have now seen again and again and again. First, there is the terrorist attack. Then, after the attack, there's commonly ISIS or some Muslim group that takes quote, credit unquote for the activity. Then, there was a call by right-wing extremists to ban or block or in some kind of way hamper the freedoms of those who are Muslim or are identified Muslim or they think are Muslim. And then, after that action, if there's an election, as we approach that election, there's the buildup in numbers and financial power of extreme right-wing groups. That pattern has happened again and again and again. And those same groups and their sympathizers employ social media to communicate their fears of Muslims and their calls for bans, incarcerations, and other types of legislation that would limit not just Muslim freedoms, but freedoms of people in the nations that are affected, or at least that local area that's affected. This goes on and on. Take the case of our President Donald Trump. In the time just before the French elections, he tweeted that the terrorist attacks that occurred at the Champs-Élysées in Paris just before would have an outcome on the elections. Why would he be interested in that? Or let's take the election in 2016, the American presidential election. Trump promised that if Hillary Clinton were elected president, there would be terrorist attacks. Remember that? If you don't, it's easily searchable on the internet. Check it out. Or take today, where Trump, in the wake of the London terror attacks, spends most of his character time, tweets, calling for exactly what other right-wing extremists have asked for. Such things as the Muslim travel ban, but he didn't use the term Muslim this time, and all other associated actions that point to a response that limits our freedoms. Think about it. 
Or if you need further proof, consider this, that in the case of, again, the French elections, it was alleged that the Russians were attempting to hack the election. Remember those Russians? And that a number of people in the intelligence community claimed this was the case. The same Russians that were said to have impacted our American election. The same Russians that would seem our really cozy friends to our U.S. President Donald Trump. I'm only pointing out what is generally acknowledged, deeply acknowledged. So you would say, well, with all of that, the right-wing extreme groups have not won the majority of elections that have passed us in the past what, year. Yes and no. If you look at wins and losses, you'll miss the point. However, if you look at the rise in extremist political action groups, then you'll see the point. This is not new. In fact, in a Rand Corporation study published in 2008, written by Claude Barberi and Esteban Igor, the two researchers learned that in looking at the Israeli elections, where a terrorist attack occurred within three months of the date of the election, there was a 1.38 percentage point swing toward the right wing group in the vote impacting that area. That is but one of a number of studies which have affirmed the observation that more often than not, terrorism supports not just the growth of extremist right-wing groups, but also political polarization between groups. You know that thing that's given rise to this divided America that we are in right now. I submit to you that this relationship needs to be studied and not ignored. All too often, we're fed a steady diet of this pattern of terrorist action, call for Muslim bans or some type of draconian act, and the selling of and advancement of and financing of right-wing political representatives for high office. In the French case, French had pretty much seen enough of Donald Trump's act and decided to come out en masse and vote. It was in case in the, that wasn't the case, obviously, in the American act, the American example. There was clearly, clearly a problem. The question is, when will we start addressing the problem and putting a stop to it? This consistent attempt to more than manipulate elections, but destabilize our economy. The bottom line is, there's a general assumption that if it's a Muslim group, they get their money from some Middle East oil interest. Why? And you'd have to ask, why that would that be the case if the terrorist act is so close to an election and if the end result is to cause an increase in financing of extreme right-wing groups and the advancing of extreme right-wing representatives. And then look at the British vote. Breakfast, Brexit well, was upon us because older Brits didn't like the immigrants, as they said. And they voted more than the millennials did, who just assumed the country wasn't going to turn in the direction that it did. Surprise. But now we have these terrorist acts. And going back to the RAND study, it was found that even among liberal groups, there is among some within that group 
to consider a more conservative, right-wing leaning approach after a terrorist attack and just prior to an election. Think about it, folks. Who gains? The right wing. The extreme right wing. In destabilizing. Now, as to why they would align with Muslim groups, because quite obviously, both have something that they feel they want to come away with in such a relationship. But the one thing that they don't want broadcast out there for common knowledge and action is that they are associated with each other. But the outcomes and these, this dynamic, which has gone on now, if you think about it, for almost, ten, for almost a decade, arguably over a decade, has to be studied, has to be called into question, and has to be stopped. Subscribe to Zenny62 on YouTube. And don't forget our Sunday through Thursday live stream, 9 o'clock Pacific. Thank you.